And he begins the opening part of that proclamation of your mercy with scriptural quotes. I think all of us are familiar with these, but it's good for us to be mindful, though, of how frequent they are in Scripture and how powerful they are in Scripture. Again, we look at the world today, we live in a very wounded world. We live in a lot of brokenness in our world community today. And somehow, we have to try to break that cycle of woundedness and we look to one of the images, by the way, that uh, Francis, uh, Pope Francis uses with regard to our own church and reading. It's, a, I think, a good description of all of our churches that the church should be a field hospital. That's a great image, isn't it? It's a great image. And we find a lot of broken people, a lot of hurting people around. Mercy and forgiveness is so important. At Psalm 136, I just... Give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. And finally, down at the 23rd verse, who remembered us in our objection, for his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. So it's his mercy endures forever. It's a kind of a mantra as we go through that psalm. And we can never forget that in terms of, I think, our own lives, and our own ministry, and our own faith community. For every person, I really love this. I took this almost as a direct quote. In the heart of every person who looks into the eyes of his or her brother or sister on the path of life. That's a great quote, isn't it? That we look at others with an eye of mercy, not of judgmentalism. Take a look at our political scene today. You want to see a lot of self-righteousness and judgmentalism going on. Wow. How do we relate to one another? We've got a lot of work to do in our culture today, don't we? A lot. Clarity. We deal with that in our own church. How do we deal with that? In a sense, it builds up the body of Christ. Mercy and forgiveness is a huge part of that in terms of breaking the cycle and moving forward. It really endears us because it puts all of us on the same playing field. We're all being redeemed. We all have our little dysfunctions <laughs> and brokenness in one way or another. That's a powerful message today. So we don't come across in the world saying, you're an evil world out there and I'm really good. We all are in this together as we struggle and as we work through our own brokenness and our own limitations and uplift everyone else. Mercy makes love visible and tangible. Love can never be an abstraction. What's that old saying? One of the longest journeys in life is from the head to the heart, 18 inches. <laughs> Embedded it. It should be in our congregation's DNA. That's who we are. And so as we look to the world about us, that mercy and forgiveness and, and compassion, lifting everyone up to the best of our ability. In Jesus, he says, Francis says, everything in him speaks of mercy. Nothing in him is devoid of compassion. Nothing. The old saying, what we have in our minds determines what we see. <clears throat> Thus the need for the lens of mercy. The lens of mercy. It's a great image. So we wear, for example, colored glasses that color a world on a bright sunny day. How do we wear the lens of mercy that colors our lives spiritually? very powerful, wonderful, life-giving way. That's our challenge. You need to be on your conversion journey. We all do. The modest the sinners are obviously very, uh, uh, things like racism in our own society would be a very clear term. Comfort the afflicted, those that are experienced tragedy, those out of work, for example, where you take a look at the results of, or the aftermath of some of our war effort. People are into PSD, our veterans coming back home. We know the stories, you see them on television. Really very serious. Forgive offenses, we need to be a forgiving people. It's not only a few times, unlimited number of times we forgive one another. Bear patient with those who do ill. Sometimes the best you can do is simply be present. Francis is very good about that. How do we, what do we need to do? He says we need to accompany people. We need to accompany people. I not, may not be able to change him or her, but by God, I can walk along with them. So that's a very, very quick uh, rundown of mercy, and, and so it's uh, 
for me is a challenge personally to live out that quality in my own life. And I think for all of us in our congregations, to get that quality that, that can really be a powerful, powerful, transformational message that's lived out in our world. Thank you very much.